On the 17th of July 2001, the loadout of the Skeen facilities commenced at Amex Walls End Yard. The flare tower was lifted by crawler crane and set down onto the Hermas H404 barge, followed over the next few days by the module support frame and stair tower. Finally, on the 27th of July, the compression module was raised from the construction ports by hydraulic trailers, moved across the yard and set onto the barge. A total of 96 trailers each were required to remove the 2,600 ton structure. Following final sea fastening, the H404 towed by the tug Anglian Duke set sail from the Tyne on the evening of the 31st July to rendezvous with the Tialf in Amoy Fjord near Stavanger. On the morning of the 3rd of August, the H404 with tugs in attendance was brought alongside the Tialf to transfer the modules to the crane's vessel's deck. Transferring topsize items onto the deck of the T-Alf was used to minimise the offshore schedule and reduce the risk associated with lifting from barges offshore. The T-Alf set sail for Beryl at noon on the 4th of August with an ETA in the field 24 hours later. Due to the good progress in Stavanger and the excellent weather forecast for the 5th and 6th of August, the platform started shutting down on August 4th, one day ahead of schedule. The barge H402 with the caisson on board had sailed from the fabrication yard in Invergordon on the evening of the 3rd and arrived in the field around noon on the 5th. By 9 o'clock, the 140,000 ton TIALF was set up in its working position adjacent to the riser tower and permission was given to commence lifting operations. Removal of the redundant crane on the riser tower was the first lift. The crane was removed in two parts, the boom followed by the cab. The crane had to be removed to allow the module support frame to be installed. The 145 metre long caisson weighing 283 tonnes was the first item to be installed. At 12.30 the 402 was brought alongside the TIALF and the caisson lifted clear of the barge. Over the next two hours, the caisson was carefully upended to a set angle of 70 degrees as the T-Alf moved back into position to hook the caisson into the supports on the riser tower deck. Once hooked into the guides, the crane lines were slackened to allow the caisson to rotate into its final position. ROVs were deployed from the T-Alf to ensure the caisson seated correctly in the jacket clamps and to close temporary straining gates. At 5 o'clock on the 6th of August, four and a half hours after lifting off from the barge, the caisson was successfully installed and a major project milestone had been achieved. The good weather continued on the 6th. The stair tower linking the compression module to the existing bridge was installed next. The stair tower weighing 75 tonnes was hooked into the pre-installed supports on the riser tower main deck and lowered into position. The module support frame was the next lift. The structure, designed to support the compression module, was stabbed over high guides on the riser tower. The guides having been designed to ensure the structure did not clash with existing production equipment on the main deck. After removal of sea fastening and transportation grillage, the compression module was lifted clear of the deck of the T-Alf and set over the module support frame. Positioning of the module was carefully controlled and once engaged on stab-in guides, the module was lowered in position and set down. The flare tower was the final lift. After upending on the deck of the T-Alf, the tower was manoeuvred into position. The 60 meter tall structure had to be installed into guides on the top of the compression deck, 63 meters above sea level. The combined height of the Skeen module and flare tower makes it one of the tallest structures in the North Sea. On the evening of the 6th of August, the T-Alf moved out of the 500 metre zone 
having completed the skiing installation program in less than 24 hours.